It's a historic day and this is an overused word in the press and yet I must use it tonight. The BJP and Narendra Modi has done the unthinkable. For the first time since Jawaharlal Nehru, a sitting Prime Minister, has come back to power with a clear majority. Look at their vote share. More than 50% in Delhi, Jharkhand, UP, Karnataka and touching 60% in Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Uttarakhand. What does all of this tell you? What do these figures tell you? People across castes, across religions, social strata, professions, age groups have voted Narendra Modi to power. As we've been saying, Indians have voted for their PM, not their MP. The opposition has been decimated. If 2014 was a Modi wave, this is bigger. It's a tsunami, a pro-incumbency wave. Through the day today, you've heard experts weigh in on what the numbers mean. You've heard reactions, even debates. Now it's time for the full story to sink in. India has handed Prime Minister Narendra Modi a decisive mandate. It's, it's an opportunity we hope he'll make the most of. On Gravitas tonight, we bring you the verdict, the message, the implications and the road ahead for India. I'm Palki Sharma Upadhyay and this is the big story, a cover story and the only story tonight. Narendra Modi and the BJP coming back with a resounding victory. One that makes him, as I said, the first Prime Minister to return to power with full majority after Jawaharlal Nehru and Indira Gandhi. The BJP and its allies have crossed the halfway mark with ease. On the other hand, we have the Congress. Under Rahul Gandhi, they have been decimated. Here's how the numbers look as of now. The BJP has a whopping 303 seats. The BJP alone. That's a massive jump from the 2014 tally when they won 282. The Congress has done better than 2014 as well, but by a paltry six seats. This time they have 51. You've still only got leads for the other parties, but those in themselves are more than telling for the fortunes of the so-called other factor. As of 8 p.m., the TMC, the Trinamool Congress of Mamata Banerjee, was ahead in 23 seats out of 42 in her state. The TMC had won 34 back in 2014, so the loss is immense. The BJP doing real damage to Mamata Banerjee's party in West Bengal. The BSP has recovered from that duck in 2014. Mayawati's party now ahead in 11 seats in Uttar Pradesh. Her alliance partner, Akhilesh Yadav, and his party, the Samajwadi Party, are ahead in five seats, so the Gadbandan really hasn't worked. It had won the same number back in 2014, so no gains, no losses for the Samajwadi Party. Five seats in all out of 18 Uttar Pradesh. In Tamil Nadu, it's a washout for the AIDMK. The party is ahead in just one seat. One seat in Tamil Nadu out of 39. It had claimed a whopping 37. The lion's share going to the DMK this time. They're ahead in 23 seats. They, they'd claimed all of nothing in 2014. They won no seats. This time they're ahead in 23. And in Karnataka, heads are going to roll in the JDS, one part of the ruling coalition in the state, and it's ahead in just one seat. Meanwhile, here's a look at the state assembly elections in four states that were held along with the Lok Sabha election. Numbers as of 8 p.m. It's a fifth term for Naveen Patnaik in Odisha. He was expected to win and he has. The BJP has given it a tough fight in the Lok Sabha election, but the BJD, the Biju Janata Dal of Naveen Patnaik, has come out trumps in the state elections. In Andhra Pradesh, it's a sweep for the YSR Congress. They're leading on no less than 145 seats. Chandra Babu Naidu has been wiped clean, reduced to just 45 seats in the 175 member assembly. In the northeast, the BJP is ahead in 31 of the 60 seats, while in Sikkim, it is the SDF that has leads in 12 seats out of 32. Others are leading in 12 seats as well. The real story today is about the BJP, as we've been saying, not just about how it has defended its victories from 2014, specifically in the Hindi heartland, states like Rajasthan, uh, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Haryana, but it has also claimed a clean sweep in Rajasthan, as I said, Gujarat, 26 out of 26, and Delhi. Additionally, it has made inroads in what was once considered unbreachable ground. The state of West Bengal, that is the big headline from this election. The Saffron Party has also made a huge impact in Karnataka, down south, the only state where the BJP has opened has has won and they've won pretty well in Karnataka. Elsewhere, they haven't really opened an account. And much of the BJP's victory has concentrated on some giant killers. There are many, 
But we'll look at just a few right now, starting with Smriti Irani. She really is the headliner. She's done the unthinkable, dislodged a Gandhi from the bastion of Amethi. We'll keep coming back to this story throughout this show. It's a very big story. She's ahead of the Congress president by more than 45,000 votes. Lucky for Rahul Gandhi that he's headed for victory in Wayanad in Kerala. He fought from two seats. In Bhopal, Sadhvi Pragya Thakur is ahead by more than 3.5 lakh votes. Quite a story, that one too. The former chief minister and Congress stalwart, Big Vijay Singh, is staring at a loss like no other. Elsewhere in Madhya Pradesh, it's another bastion loss for the Congress, this time for Jyotiraditya Sindhya, the Dianist and the Congress leader. The BJP candidate, Dr. K.P. Yadav, is leading there by more than one lakh votes. What an upset.